G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, a while back I did a review on this 0 to 25mm digital and analogue uh, micrometer that Banggood kindly donated. And it was a really good unit, and I really like it a lot. And the only thing I didn't like about it was it had, it's got a lock on lever on the back for the, for the thimble. And I'm used to Mitsu Toyo, which you always have them on the front, and, uh, and more and right, the same thing. So I found that a bit of a nuisance. But as a unit to use, it was very accurate, really good, pleasant, easy to read the display, very, very easy. And I was using it all the time, it was super duper. Anyway, then it had a nasty accident, a piece of steel went flying across the workshop and smacked it right on the display, broke the outside screen. And I thought it was cactus at the time. But then I pulled it apart into some other videos and I found it was repairable. And I got another piece of glass to put in, which is a microscope slide. I've just got to trim it down. So I'm waiting for a, a diamond scribe to come in that I bought a cheapie. And I'm going to cut that and fit that. And that should be as good as new again. But at the time I was, um, yeah, I was pretty pissed off. And I thought, oh, it looks like it's buggered because it really did a job on the screen. And I thought, well, I'll just buy another one of these because they're really, they are really very, very good, very good to use. If you, especially, especially if you wear reading glasses, you know, you can still read the screen fine. Anyway, uh, then I thought, oh, hang on, when I reviewed this, there was a second um, uh, digital micrometer that uh, Banggood also sold, a cheaper version, which was purely digital. And it was a toss up between the two. I really liked the look of it and also it had the lock on the front. Now, this one supposedly had the lock on the front as well. But it turns out the, the Banggood uh, website was showing pictures for a different model. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, so this one came with a lock on the back. So anyway, I got on a Banggood and said, well, look, you know, I've broken this. Can you send me the other one to review and get me out of a fix? And they, yep, no problem. So they sent me the other one. So today we'll look at the other one and we can compare the two and just see how they go. It's a good opportunity. So, what's the new one look like in comparison? Well, I'll show you. If we look at them side by side, you can see that they are quite different. Uh, looking at the boxes first, this has got a better quality box for sure than this one. This one, the box is not as, not as heavy duty. Uh, it does the job, but it's nothing fantastic. Now with this one, you also you get a battery and a wrench, adjusting wrench. With this, you don't get a battery and you don't get an adjusting wrench because there's nothing to adjust. Mechanically, that is. It's purely digital, so you, you purely just set your, uh, your zero point electronically. So that's, uh, that's one difference. Now looking at them first off, you can see straight away that this has actually got, got better build quality. The finish is, is better on first look. Uh, taking it out of the box. On the back you can see that it's very finely done, very nicely done. The battery cover's nice and cleanly uh, cast in plastic and very well done. This one, everything's a bit uh, a bit rougher. It's not as nicely cast. It, it works, it does the job. But I'm just saying that the actual finish on this is rougher. It's got a bit of a ding there in the in the finish. It's 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 work it's durable, it's a workhorse. This one's got a lot, a lot more plastic and uh, how it would stand to knock, so I don't know, but it is basically a cleaner looking unit. The other thing is too, with this on the thimble, your ratchet stop is on the end. Okay? This is your main adjuster here for the thimble and the ratchet stops on the end. On this one, it's the other way around. On this one, this is your main adjuster and your ratchet stop is here. Which is really nice. I mean, actually, that is really nice 
really nice to use. It, it feels really good and I mean that's totally different to all other micrometers I've used but it's actually functionally very nice. Now as I said you don't get a battery with this one, you have to buy one. The battery it takes is a CR1632. I went and got one from JCAR Electronics and it was it was about three dollars. No big deal, but I mean, you'd think they'd toss a battery in, there's a place for a battery, and it's it's ultimate penny pinching really when you consider it. I mean, this one came with a battery, even though it wasn't actually advertised as having a battery. And this one was advertised as not having a battery, or well, the battery wasn't included in the in the uh, description. So, yeah, you have to go and buy a battery, which I think is a bit miserable. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this. I'll uh, put the battery in and we'll just feel how it, how, you know, how it goes and play around with it. I should point out that you also get a certificate of inspection uh, which they love sticking in these sort of units and as well as that you get a, a much more useful uh, set of instructions for the, for the micrometer and for a change it's actually in the Queen's English single language, very comprehensive, quite uh, descriptive and informative, yeah, well worth seeing, it even shows the things like error solutions and how to load the battery and stuff like that. So yeah, that's a, a welcome addition. The first thing you notice is that the buttons are reversed on the display, on this one the on off is on the right, and this one's on the left. You notice that they both have a three decimal point metric readout. But when you go to Imperial, things get a lot different. This one has five decimal places. This one has four. Now four is plenty high enough. Five is overkill. If we go back to metric, which is what I work in, that's a lot more realistic readout because, let's face it, the average home hobby lay will never ever get anywhere near three decimal places of accuracy doing general turning. We're actually using cutting tools. If you're grinding and you lock down the cross slide, uh, well then yes you can get down to this sort of accuracy level because you're doing very, very, very light cuts. Oh, well. They're not actually cuts, they're grinds, I should be saying. So yeah, that's the sort of decimal places you get on these sort of units. But when you look at the actual specification, the rated specification on the frame, it, in both cases it's 0 0.001 millimetre. So that fifth decimal place for Imperial is basically a bit meaningless really, I think. Now also, when you look at these units, Physically, they're dimensionally very similar, but weight-wise, they're quite different. This feels really nice. This is a perfect weight. This feels, I'd say, well, more than half as heavy again, almost twice as heavy. It's a very heavy unit. This is a very light unit, and it's comparable in weight to my regular little Michu Toyo analog 0 to 25 unit, which I've used for like, you know, 30 or 40 years. So this is very nice weight. So is this. This is very, very heavy in comparison. Looking at the displays, you can see that this one is twice as big as this one, but they're both very clear, very easy to read. Now, this one does not power down automatically. If you leave it on, it'll just stay on forever. This one has... Uh, a power down function built in and after 20 minutes it will it will power off and even better uh, after 150 hours it basically goes to an even lower level where your all the um, readings in it will just basically be ditched so it basically has to be reset after 150 hours well, that's a good battery saving thing, but at least, yes, this does have battery saving function built in. This one doesn't have anything like that at all. 
looking at the physical um, controls on, on this unit, the mechanical controls, the locking lever on the front is quite good and it's, it's very effective. You don't need a lot of pressure. Yeah, very good. But they could have had the lever across the left a bit more. That's the off position there. You've got to get your thumb in between it and the edge of the, the display to pull it. They could have had it in the off position there and then you just push it across the left a bit more to lock it. It's a small thing but it would have made a unit better, easier to use so maybe they should sort of think about that. But yeah, it's a very effective lock and it's, you know, it's okay but yeah, just a minor thing. That would be better in the off there and over to the left because it's not going to intrude into this area at all. So yeah, they've got the room. Now, the actual uh, ratchet on this one is, the ratchet stop is very, very light. Very, very light. It's very similar to the ratchet stop on my Mitsu Toyo. This is a little bit heavier. The ratchet stop on this one is a lot heavier. A lot more effort required. So this is the heaviest. This is the in-between and this is definitely the lightest. This is just as smooth and as light as butter. You know, it's, it's really good. To check the accuracy of the digital micrometer, we'll start off with our 25mm test block. It's a Mitsu Toyo test block that came with my analog 25 to 50 Mitsu Toyo unit. And like all test blocks, just because they're test blocks doesn't mean they're actually going to be dead accurate. In this case, the Mitsu Toyo, which is supposed to be 25mm, and the certified uh, as 25mm is actually 25.025. You can see that here on the scale, on the vernier. So there you go, Mitsu Toyo test block, not accurate. But we can still use it as a reference point, so we will. All right, we've turned the unit on and we'll check the repeatability. Seems okay. So now we'll open it up to 25 mil and put in the test piece. Now with these ratchet stops, it's, it's strong enough that you can actually use this as uh, the main uh, rotating uh, grip. Uh, you can use either, so it's quite nice to use really. The whole thing is very pleasant, easy to use. All right, we'll open it up to 25 mil. All right, let's put this test piece in the digital unit. Now we know this test piece is out a bit. And I've got a sneaking suspicion it could have a slightly non 90 degree end on it. I'm a bit wary of this test piece. Twenty-five point zero three two. Twenty-five point zero three one. So that's point point zero zero six higher. I'll rotate it and just see if it is trustworthy. Okay, that's the problem with this stuff. Not only does the length has to be correct, but it has to be perfectly accurately ground as far as the 90 degrees go. Now look at that. 25.019, the same test piece. So this test piece is not reliable. It's obviously got a slightly non-90 non degree angular end on it. So yeah, you can't really draw a lot from that. So it just goes to show you what you deal with with this stuff, you know. To confirm that, that this test piece is not perfect, I rotated it 
in several positions and check that on the original reference micrometer and look you can see once again it's giving a different figure and it's giving point 25.01 and a fraction more so once again yeah this is not a reliable test piece all right I've got some finely ground high-speed steel here that came from a factory they used it for injection uh, molding 15.867 and I've just got rotated around through this and that's pretty much uniform 15.867 I've got another position 15.867 so let's try the analog on this. Fifteen point eight six five. Yep. So yeah, that's giving a very very close reading same again 15.865 so yeah certainly very very close so I'd, I'd trust this a lot more than that test piece we looked at all right we'll go to a smaller diameter and see how that shapes up 9.4 Seven eight. Nine point four seven eight. Nine point four seven eight, I'd say for sure. So yeah, consistent, very close, very, very, um, very good, really. And four, seven, eight, once again. So yeah, so yeah, it looks like uh, this unit is very, very good. I'd, uh, I'd certainly be happy with those readings. I think that, um, yeah, that's as good as you could hope for. So which is the better unit of the two? Wow, that's a mighty tough call. Mighty tough, because these are both really good units. Uh, I mean, I've used this one you know, reasonably long term and never had a problem with it, never missed a bead. It, perfect. A really good, really good unit. This one's got that extra decimal point on the imperial side of things, which may be of some use to somebody. I mean, I work in metric, so it is using the three the three uh, decimal points on the metric side of things. But, uh, wow, yeah, very, very difficult to, to choose between them. This has got the lock on the front that I like. This has got lock on the back that someone else might like. Uh, this has got ABS plastic on the thimble. How durable that will be to drop it, I don't know. This has got the analog vernier as well. But of course you're buying a digital micrometer to use it digitally I expect so the analog side is well you know it's up to you so this looking at it on a digital side of things when we look at the dollars there's a big difference this one here is forty three dollars Australian or thirty four dollars US this one here is seventy dollars Australian or fifty six dollars US fifty six US versus thirty four US that's a huge difference for basically comparable performance and quality wise I think this actually has got a better build quality than this one they're both quite okay but yeah looking at it and yeah this is a nice unit so there you have it it's, it's up to you guys you know I try to be as non-biased as uh, as possible on this stuff but quite seriously if I was buying one yeah that's the one Alright, well that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this, got something out of it, and uh, yeah, until next time, see you around.